And today I wanted to detail for you a very interesting component of HDL cholesterol, or high density lipoprotein cholesterol, commonly referred to as the good cholesterol. It's an antioxidant enzyme called paraoxinase 1, and it plays an important role in drug metabolism and also the prevention of cardiovascular and neurodegenerative diseases. Paraoxinase 1 is synthesized in the liver and then released into circulation where it binds to HDL cholesterol and also myeloperoxidase, a key enzyme released from neutrophils in defense of invading pathogens. And while paraoxinase 1 can function without HDL cholesterol, when paraoxinase 1 is bound to HDL, its enzymatic activity is much higher. So here is the first indication that maintaining consistently high HDL cholesterol is essential for optimizing the performance of paraoxinase 1. Once released from the liver, paraoxinase 1 binds to cell membranes and protects lipids from oxidative degradation, what we know as lipid peroxidation. Paraoxinase 1 also reduces plasma levels of homocysteine and consequently the synthesis of homocysteine thiolactone, a toxic metabolite that is one factor in the development of cardiovascular, neurological, autoimmune diseases, and even cancer. Paraoxinase 1 is an important protector against exposure to compounds like insecticides and other nerve toxins while also neutralizing the pro-inflammatory oxidized lipids found in LDL or low-density lipoprotein cholesterol. Because paraoxinase 1 is produced in the liver, its expression level and activity decreases significantly when there's any kind of liver damage or repetitive stress. So where does paraoxinase 1's role as an antiviral begin? Paraoxinase 1-bound high-density lipoproteins decrease the virus-induced endothelium inflammation and accompanying oxidative stress while increasing nitric oxide production and overall endothelial cell survival. This effectively neutralizes most of the invading pathogen's inflammation-driven damaging effects. So, as a refresher, high-density lipoproteins primarily keep dietary cholesterol from accumulating along the walls of our blood vessels while transporting said cholesterol back to the liver for excretion. This process is known as reverse cholesterol transport. HDL's functionality as an antioxidant and even its anti-infection capacity can be impaired, however, by oxidation and especially glycation. And glycation happens when excessive dietary glucose binds to the body's proteins. The advanced glycation end products, or AGEs, that are consequentially produced cross-link with other proteins and fats and greatly impair their function. The accumulation of advanced glycation end products damages delicate cellular structures, leading to chronic inflammation, premature disease, and accelerated aging. And advanced glycation end products are also damaging to HDL cholesterol. Glycated HDL cholesterol can lose more than half of its paraoxinase 1-driven anti-infection potential simply because of existing glycation. And this is just one reason why people with diabetes and or hypertension are much more susceptible to a viral infection. Glycation can even deactivate paraoxinase 1 completely in severe cases. Also, existing HDL cholesterol declines rapidly during an active viral infection anyway, especially during the chaos of a cytokine storm. Glycation impairs both paraoxinase 1 and also apolylipoprotein 1, which ordinarily is very effective at eradicating invading microbes and parasites. While this should be a concern for everyone, it's especially problematic for older people as glycation-damaged HDL can then accelerate the progression of atherosclerosis and cellular senescence. Low HDL cholesterol is also associated with with elevated levels of galactin-3, a metabolic protein which is ordinarily essential for the repair of damaged tissue. But when galactin-3 is produced excessively, this is when it earns its dubious title, the protein of death. Galactin-3 easily binds to glycated proteins, while also influencing the formation of biofilms, which are themselves a major source of inflammation. So obviously, the solution here is to optimize HDL cholesterol production as much as possible while reducing intake of foods that induce glycation. And again, as you know, this is primarily refined sugars and carbs, what we know, unfortunately, as the standard American diet. 
Those of you who follow me know very well that my favorite way of optimizing HDL is through regular intake of flushing niacin, also known as nicotinic acid. Niacin raises HDL while lowering LDL, triglycerides, and related inflammation better than any other single compound, so it really should be part of your daily routine. Another B vitamin, benfotiamine, which is a fat-soluble form of vitamin B1, or thiamine, inhibits advanced glycation and product formation and its accompanying inflammation. The amino acid dipeptide carnosine prevents the tissue hardening and age-related cross-linking of proteins also. Ubiquinol, or at the least CoQ10, is a powerful antioxidant that supports HDL production through directly reducing cholesterol oxidation while also boosting our body's universal energy currency, adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. Lastly, modified citrus pectin, which is exceptional for detoxing the body of heavy metals and numerous other toxins, is the best defense against excessive galactin-3 because modified citrus pectin is well known for inhibiting galactin-3 directly. So these things should give you some ideas for how to optimize HDL production and consequently that of paraoxinase 1 also. And you should know by now that a large part of doing this involves reducing inflammation, especially the dietary kind. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzymental. Stay healthy.